Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. We're continuing on with the katana. And yesterday, and in fact the day before too, you saw me working on the guard, the tsuba, as far as I understand. That is what it's called. It might not be called. Let me know in the comments below. And on today's episode, we're going to be working on a spacer. But before we get on to that, you remember yesterday so we could fill up some content and make yesterday's episode even better. Because we repeated the same thing that we did the day before. We made a kiridashi out of the same wrought iron that we used for the guard and out of one of the same billets of Damascus that made up the stars and the special pattern that's running down the, the middle of the sword, we're going to go into the grinding room and we're going to start grinding on that Kiridashi. Thanks for joining me. So the Kiridashi has been a rough ground and of course if you're unfamiliar as to why it is I'm making a Kiridashi while well, I'm making a Katana It's because yesterday we needed to make content and a Kiridashi is going to be useful in some of the next major steps of the Katana process We need to heat treat this bad boy we're gonna do it with the torch. This is how it's looking right now. It's at 120 grit all over. There is a slight issue. There's a little bit of delamination right here, which is a great shame. That's just where the wrought iron did not uh, weld in nicely with the Damascus. We're still gonna go ahead and finish this thing real fast. Now, first things first, I'm gonna do a normalizing cycle. So I'm gonna heat this up to the critical temperature and hopefully not explode the workshop. Let it cool down in still air. Okay, so now we've done a total of three normalizing cycles. We're slowly bringing this up to temperature for our final quench. And uh, we're going to do something interesting with our quench and our temper. You've seen me do it before. Okay, we're up to temperature. Into the oil we go. But I'm not going to cool off the whole piece. I actually want a little extra heat in there because that's going to be how we temper it. So the way we temper it, you see me do this before, I've done it a lot on hand tools, is I'm going to scratch the edge here with a, uh, a grinding disc. And then what I can do is if I reflect it in the light, I'm going to see the temper colors. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a dark blue back here and a light straw along the edge. And so just make sure that, okay, I need to cool off this heel right there. It's got the heat back in it a little faster. And as we come up to the toe of the piece, so you've got a nice straw there. The straw is slowly coming up to the toe. It got too hot at the heel. Pull off the heel some more. And then we'll repeat the process. Working with new scratch lines, we'll do a second temper cycle. Okay, and there we go. Got straw at the tip. I'll cool off the whole thing, give it a wipe, and then now in regards to what we're going to do on the sepa, which is a copper spacer, I'm not entirely sure. I want to wait until I've started working on the actual handle itself. So I've taken this piece of copper, put some blue dico on it, scribed some lines, and made a center punch mark where I need a five millimeter hole. All I'm going to do here is make sure that I've got a good fit up with the tang, and then the final shaping can be done when the handle is there so we can kind of see where we want this. should be all it takes to break the blonde of the super glue. There we go. And I'll just take the opportunity to anneal it. So 
the copper spacer fits up there rather nicely. And of course now, time to continue working on this little Kiridashi so we can make the handle. Okay, so we've got it polished. I'm going to give it a little bit of a degrease there. I'm going to make sure I don't touch it with my hands anymore. Wipe it down. And so obviously this is wrought iron and Damascus steel. And over the last few episodes, you've heard me talk just a little bit about some of the interesting features of wrought iron. So one of these fabulous features, of course, is the grain-like texture that it has, similar to Damascus steel, not so contrasty um, than the steels that we use for our Damascus, but it's gonna look a little like a, a wood grain, or at least I hope it does, otherwise this preamble would have been useless. But because we have a Damascus edge, there's gonna be Damascus on the edge, wrought iron, on the tang of the Kiridashi. Should we have a look? It's gonna take some time for the wrought iron to etch and enough that we can see it. We're gonna do a very nice heavy etch. But here you can get a little bit of an idea of the almost wood grain like texture that wrought iron has. Teamed with the Damascus on the edge, this is a special, special piece. We're gonna leave it in there for about half an hour to an hour. I need to extend my sincere gratitude to Island Blacksmith. I'm gonna link his stuff down below because he reached out to me. He, uh, he specializes in making tantos, I believe. The Samurai Carpenter made a video with him. He reached out and gave me some unbelievable resources to look at that he's got on his website regarding traditional Japanese constructions and holy moly. Holy moly macaroni. It has been so insightful to learn and get a little bit of an inkling as to how it is that he makes the handles because the next step is going to be making the handle. Now, our tang. It's very difficult to make YouTube videos with pens that don't work. Our tang obviously is very long and in ways that I've made handles before is I'll use a milling cutter and a drill bit and a file and chisels and work it out of a piece. But that's for a handle that's like four or five inches long. This tang here, it's enormous. How do we get a hole in there? Well, the Japanese way of doing it as far as I understand, thank you Island Blacksmith, is we take a block of wood that is the block of wood that needs a hole in it to be shaped for the handle. We cut down the center of the wood. We plane the two faces so they're perfectly flat and will sit back together. We open up the two pieces and we carve out the shape of the tang in both halves. The two pieces get glued back together, the handle gets shaped, and it fits perfectly to the tang. This is the same way they make the scabbard of a katana. Insert Japanese word for that. It's just obviously that's on a much larger scale. So there's gonna be a lot of chiseling required for this. And of course, that is why we're making the kiridashi because we need a kiridashi for it, despite the fact that I've already got a kiridashi, but I needed YouTube content, really. Okay, okay, okay. So I left the kiridashi in the acid for 14 hours or so, if not a little bit longer. The raw time etched away like you wouldn't believe, and it looked pretty terrible. I did not know whether I was gonna be able to salvage this. I went to the grinder, I took some 240 grit, I worked on the edges, I went to my buffing wheels, and I, and I worked a little bit on that, smoothed it off to see if I couldn't, you know, if I could get it to the point where I wouldn't cut myself. I sharpened it again. You gotta check this out. <laughs> Well, 
I cannot believe how awesome that looks. Goodness, I am just so lucky that it is still in one piece and I actually managed to get something that, that can be held and isn't gonna cut you from bits of wrought iron that is sticking out. So I'm actually very pleased. Terrible mistake. Don't leave stuff in acid for 14 hours unless you want it to look like it's been underwater for 200 years. But it is indeed time to move on to the next step. And now it is time for the handle. I've got a selection of woods here. I've got oak, I've got rosewood, olive wood, or ebony. The problem with ebony is it's a very brittle wood, so I don't think it's gonna work too well for this handle construction. It would probably, however, be lovely to carve, because we've got a lot of carving coming up. It's a tough one. This is the stingray leather that I have, and one little issue with this is it's a little bit small indeed, um, so I can't wrap it all the way around. However, I was watching a Japanese sword documentary that somebody kindly sent me a link to, and I saw them inset it into the handle. I tell you what, stingray leather is an extremely interesting material. Firstly, the, the hide itself looks just like you'd expect. It even has eye holes. What's very interesting is the texture of this. It's almost like it's a little beads. It's a fascinating material. And even with all those fancy woods that we've got down there, here is a piece of oak, and I dare say I'm tempted to use a very, very simple material. Use the oak for this handle. It means I've got plenty to work with and so I'll easily have enough. Obviously, you know, this is a massive board, but I can, I can really make sure that I definitely have enough. Ah, having said that, I'd have enough in the ebony if I decided to use that. And yep, I'd have more than enough in the other woods if I decided to use those. So why is it that my mind goes towards using oak? I don't quite know, but it does. So we are here at my father's wood workshop, which is, uh, which is very exciting. I grew up in here learning how to use a draw knife and such forth. And so uh, it's, uh, it's good to do a little bit of work here because he's got tools that I don't have. Better to do with some uh, woodwork in the wood workshop. Here is our piece of oak and uh, we need to start working on it. My plan's as follows. I'm gonna cut off a piece uh, that's gonna work for the handle. We're then gonna slice it down the middle. We're gonna plane it flat so it meets back together perfectly. And then is the uh, long and arduous task of carving out the perfect tang hole, half in one side, half in the other. This is, uh, this is gonna be an ordeal.
have our two pieces pretty flat. Very difficult trying to use a plane and get stuff flat. Um, we also have another two pieces. This is the first two pieces we started with that I had to put to the side because, like I said, planing things is difficult. But what I now need to do is I need to use the Kiridashi, our marking knife, indeed, to lay out where it is that we cut out our material for the tang. Ugly dugly. So now, I've got a lot of carving to do. Gee whiz, I certainly have my work cut out for me for the rest of the day, but for this episode, that's gonna be it. Make sure you hit subscribe so you can see how this goes. Woodworking is not a real skill of mine, so it's gonna be fun trying to learn and work my way through it. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you drop a like below, leave us a comment. We'll see you tomorrow as we continue working on with this.